Welcome to Perifractics Retro Recipes. While you were waiting, I was just reading through the Zap64 2019 calendar, getting ready for that. It's coming up quick, isn't it? Um, in the meantime, I'm all set up here for a Christmas unboxing, for unwrapping. It is Christmas after all. Um, we've got the Commodore Christmas demo. Now this, uh, a lot of people show this at Christmas. This is actually pretty special to me. I used to watch this every Christmas, um, kind of religiously. You know, when I was 12 years old, I'd run upstairs, load up the tape. I think it actually came on the cover of the magazine, maybe Zap64, and I would load it up and just feel very Christmassy as you do when you're 12. But today I'm feeling pretty Christmassy again. You know, this is the first year doing this channel and it's definitely reinvigorated my love of retro and of Christmas. So I've got my eggnog in my retro recipes cup. See link in description, obligatory promotion. Um, it's not eggnog, actually it's cider. Or as we say in America, hard cider. Uh, if you order cider in America, you just get apple juice, which makes you feel like you're 12 again. So hard cider at the ready. Um, let's get unwrapping. Uh, I do just want to quickly say I was overcome with emulsion at the uh, feedback of the Atari painting video. Get the uh, emulsion painting. Um, yeah, it's right here. Looking great with that lovely paint job that doesn't rub off. Um, I still feel like it's a little better for this case, this use case scenario than retro brighting is giving it that light dusting of spray. You know, retro brighting can come back uh, the yellowing comes back after a couple of years, sometimes months. You have to repeat the process, dismantle everything, add bleach, which can make the plastic more brittle. And this took literally 60 seconds of actual spraying and the yellowing's not gonna come back. So I'm pretty happy with that. One more thing before we get going. Hope you like the hat. There we go. <laughs> the finishing touch. All right, we are all ready to go. Uh, feel free to throw in your comments in the live chat. This is uh, originally streaming to Patreons only and then goes public uh, as a recording a little later on in the process. Um, so welcome to my Patreons. All right, nothing else left to say. It's Christmas. Nearly. <laughs> Lucky that didn't fall in my cider. It wouldn't have been hard cider. It would have been ribbon cider. All right, so first up, this is coming from China, from Gary Bayazilko. Buy a Zilco. Everybody go out and buy a Zilco right now. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got some candy. That's nice. Yee. Shall I eat that? I'll, eat. I'll save that for my stocking filler. More candy. It's, um, it's candy that looks to me like beef. So that'll be interesting. Some beef candy. And of course, just what you want on Christmas, some squid. Squid candy. All right. <laughs> Lend us a squid. Uh, oh, one more. We won't unbox all the candy, but thank you so much, Gary. Okay, I know what this is. So Gary emailed me. This is for the ZX Spectrum Next. It's called Next Door. Um, to play on words, DAW. So a DAW is a digital audio workstation. And indeed, that is what this is. Um, I'm not sure if the image is actually back to front. Let me know in the live chat. Uh, it's one of those weird YouTube things um, that if you live stream from your camera, it can flip the image. Uh, and they haven't haven't actually resolved that yet. Um, but it is called Store. And it says, long gone are the days of clunky programmer-centric trackers. Nextdoor is reimagining of a modern digital audio workstation for the ZX Spectrum Next. Now, I have a space over here reserved for ZX Spectrum Next when it finally arrives on my doorstep. Um, and thanks, Michael, for confirming the image is not flipped. I think they just flip it for me so that I look like I'm in a mirror. Um, I guess they assume that I spend a lot of time looking in the mirror. I, don't, I can't stand the sound of my voice or the way I look. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll fix that with hopefully in here there'll be some plastic surgery implements. But in here, speaking of plastic, is the SD card and that's going to plug straight into the next when I get it. Um, let's hope I do get the next next. Thank you so much, Gary. That is Next Door, and you can find that at nextdaw.byazillo.com. Oh, I said it wrong. So that's B-I-A-S-I-L-L-O.com. I'll put a link in the description. 
All right, can't wait to try that. Next up, something is from the future was 8-bit. You know, these guys are so generous and helpful, and they're actually helping me out with an upcoming slightly Lego-related project. I uh, can't say too much, but stay tuned for info on that. All right, let's check in the live chat here. And what could this be? Some of these things, you know, I, I order, actually, and some of these are donations. And this one, I think, was an order, um, unlike the last one. But I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Ah, okay. Let me open it and show you. This is a deluxe composite mod kit. And I'll show you on the invoice. It gives you a little more info about it. Um, but this is for the ZX81 Atari 2600, Atari 7800, etc. And... Um, this was, I think, basically an alternative mod to the one that I literally just did. Bad timing. Uh, so this is the cable. And then you have the jumper cable. And in here are these sensitive electrostatic parts. And I don't know if you can see behind me a little beastie roaming around. Hey, beastie, come here. Yeah, come here. Here's the beastie. This is Puppy Fractic, one of many Puppy Fractics. This is a graphics mod for an Atari. Don't drink my hard cider. Let's take a look, shall we? Let me take a look. Yeah. Do you like my hat? Do you like my hat? That's fun. Oh, that's fun. That's a fun hat. I'll get you with it. I'll get you with it. <laughs> she is such a sweet dog. All right. And there's the little mod. So you can find out more information about this uh, Atari and ZX81 mod at TFW, the future was 8bit.com. I'll put a link again in the description, but thank you guys. And look out for that upcoming project involving Lego and the future was 8-bit. I really think they should have called themselves the future is 8-bit. Yeah. Next up, we have a priority mail package. Let's see if we can open this up as a priority. These things are sometimes difficult. Puppy Fractic, what are you doing in the toilet? She uses human toilets. By the way, this hat is actually powered by a Commodore 64 Mini inside here. True story. Okay. What is this? <gasps> I just look like a 12-year-old again. Can you see what it is? So if you've been following my Atari series of um, the refurb and upgrade, uh, sorry, I'm popping the bubble wrap. The whole story, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm happy. Look what I got. The whole story behind my Atari um, evolution was that I persuaded my mum to buy me an Atari video game system so I could play this, because look at the bottom it says, for Atari video game systems. Unfortunately, Atari were a little known for not being clear on their advertising. So she bought me, at my request, an Atari 400. And of course, if we open this up, we realize that the cartridge will not fit in the 400. This is for the VCS, which I now know what a VCS is. But I've dreamed of actually buying this for 35 years. Um, it's not going to fit in there, but in my previous unboxing, I was donated a VCS Heavy Sixer, which I'm, it was faulty, but I'm going to fix it up in an upcoming episode and finally get my dream of playing The Empire Strikes Back on my Atari. Happy Christmas, everyone. I'm feeling happy. That is so cool. All right. What, what are your favorite Christmas memories? Let me know in the live chat, um, retro-related or even not. Maybe you got Samantha Fox's strip poker. Yeah, that's always a favorite with the teenage boys, wasn't it? Yeah. She just slid the cartridge across the floor. I forgive you. Okay, moving on. Another mysterious package. And I, it is interesting how everybody sent those with these ribbons on, as if they knew. Oh, okay. I know what this is. So this is from Dracware. And it's called the Mac 2 USB. There's a little PCB in there. Uh, and it basically will allow you to connect a Macintosh keyboard 
old, you know, Macintosh Classic or Macintosh 2 to a USB adapter, and that will allow you to connect it to a modern iMac. That's something I'm kind of kind of interested in doing. I do miss that mechanical keyboard, the way it feels and that sort of clunky stuff when you're typing away. So I'm gonna be trying to get an old Macintosh Classic keyboard working with my modern day iMac. Speaking of PCBs, I do wanna do a quick shout out for PCB Way. I mentioned them a lot on this channel. Um, they've been helping out with an upcoming project. And what we're doing is we are finally giving the Commodore 64 a way to switch between NTSC and PAL. So this is an NTSC mag, uh, machine, for example. And the problem with NTSC is a lot of, or the vast majority of games and demos were written for PAL. So the music plays too fast on NTSC, uh, other timing problems. In fact, um, Sam's Journey is a, it's a good example of that. You can't actually play the cartridge on an NTSC machine at all. So with this thing that we're building, um, with PCB Way's help, it's gonna be allow you to put two VIC chips in this new product, this new PCB. And with the machine off, flick a switch and it will flick to the other VIC chip. Um, it's kind of complicated. So we're actually just finished our first prototyping. We're now doing revisions and PCB Way very kindly have again donated new PCBs using their PCB. <laughs> the dog is jumping on the camera stand. Don't do that. Yeah, no, I'm talking, talking about PCB Way and how they are donating a second set of PCBs for our, um, I guess, our alpha prototype now. So hopefully that's going to work. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a video all about it. Why are you whining? You want the Vic 2? Yeah, you want it now? Um, you can check that out in the link. I'm going to put a link below. It's called the Vic 2 squared for obvious reasons, not just because I'm square. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if, I, if my calculations are correct, this should be the other part of that Mac to classic, Mac to classic, Mac to USB equation. He's feeling festive. So my best friend growing up, um, Matthew, his dad, Philip, hi Philip, hi Matthew, they had a Macintosh and that was one of my first introductions to the Mac. Uh, I had an Apple IIe, this one, um, as a, since I was eight. That was the first computer my household had. But here is that distinctive, oh yeah, it has that kind of echoey, plinky plunky, almost plinky plunky sound. All right, this is the M0110A, of course, as everybody knows. And that's gonna allow me to plug in via, let's see if we just set it up real quick via the Mac to USB. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is half the video here, really. I think it'll be a quick bite video. There it is. And that's going to then allow me to interface with USB. And I'm going to have to figure out how the drivers work and everything. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Now, Fred says, now that is a mechanical keyboard. It sure is. I might just keep that on the desk here. It just feels I feel like I'm kind of uh, in the newsroom. Coming up on Retro Recipes Newsflash. Perifractic has received a Macintosh keyboard. Breaking news there. Hope we don't break the keyboard. I'll right, we'll leave that there for a bit. Won't spill cider on it. Retro Recipes cup. Um, now this, just speaking of PCB way, what they do with their assembly service is they'll surface mount those tricky SMD surface mount um, components on there for you. So let's say you order a PCB like this, they'll put on all the stuff that you just can't really do very easily at home. So what we're gonna do is get the difficult interface that connects the two boards that we're gonna be providing. They're gonna surface mount the uh, connection for that. And everything else, you can solder yourself using regular um, capacitors and all the kit that we're gonna give you. And that should be easy enough to do. So check out their PCB assembly service. They have some great deals for Christmas. You get up to $1,000 off PCB prototypes. Now, Puppy Fractic is whining, which I think means it's time for a treat. You want a treat? Pupsies. Come on. Pupsies. There she goes. All right. Now, listen. Give me a paw up here. Give me a paw if you like Macintosh. She does. She does like Macintosh. Here we go. Give me a paw if you prefer Commodore. She's American. Do you prefer Com Commodore? Give me a paw. Paw for Commodore. There it is. 
cheaper for this Commodore. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just love all retro gear. Um, everything here is special to me. And this, these are all computers that I owned growing up at some point or another. So special stuff. Right. So let's move on to, I think, our final package. Um, heading towards that 20 minute magical mark. It's very cozy having you all here with me. What the hell? Let's go for broke. Let's slap on a PCB waste sticker. Job done. All right. I do have to lose the newsroom keyboard. Put that down there. And final package is a big one. If only there were a euphemism I could make for that, but nothing comes to mind. So let's open up this big package. And this, I can tell you, is from David Philippe Gill. Um, <laughs> David, I've been speaking... I've got some cardboard crumbs in my side. Of it. David, I've been speaking to on email. Oh, <laughs> always exciting. This is indeed... Some sort of computer. And that's it. Oh, happy Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen one of these before. Um, I probably have to, we'll have to go on Wikipedia or something to figure out what it is. So it's got like two, two nine pin ports there. So maybe it's some kind of an Atari. Um, Commodore 64. Oh, it's a Commodore 64. My bad. Sorry. Very embarrassing. I feel silly now. Um, yeah, David sent me this and it's faulty. Now, I hadn't been doing a lot of repairs because I've been busy making videos, but actually I decided to just to take in a few more. So I'm going to be trying to fix this for David. And I'll, uh, if it's interesting enough, I'm going to put it into a Retro Recipes episode. Um, if it's too complex, and sometimes these black screen repairs can be, what we'll do is put it up to you guys in the community for feedback, and we can maybe do a collaborative series of repairs. That'll be fun. Breaking news. All right, I think we are... Oh, and he didn't give me a return label. How kind. Um, I think we are basically out of time and out of packages. Um, I suppose while we're here, we could get the Brick C4 and do a little front by front, side by side comparison. Turn the power on, of course. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to decide which one to use for my uh, first official upcoming newscast. Anyway, I think that's about it. If you guys want to donate any gear to the Retro Recipes Kitchen, it's always appreciated. Uh, I'll include it in another live unboxing, and maybe it'll make its way into an episode as well. Um, Puppy Fractic's crying and says it's time to get on with this. So check out the donate link in the description and all the other links of the things that we've got here today into the kitchen. Uh, just remains for me to say please like and subscribe. And of course, uh, I wish you a very Perry Christmas. Stay tuned on Christmas Day. I've got a very fun video coming up. We're going to be unpeeling the protective film from a Sega Master System that hasn't been removed since 30 years ago that it was purchased. That's going to be very therapeutic. And make a nice little Christmas unwrapping video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Comment below and cheerio.